Thank you. My name is John Scheller, and I'm, uh, I'm wearing two hats today. I'm a manager with the King County Library System as well as a trustee with PCC Natural Markets. Libraries are a lot like co-ops. They're member-driven, and they were formed by a group of people coming together, saying we're going to share our resources, we're going to pool our resources to provide things for ourselves that we're not um, finding in other ways. So there's, there's just a real natural um, uh, kind of parallel there. We both rely heavily on our members liking what it is that we're providing. So use, like Maryland's hierarchy of needs, use is really the bedrock for us. It's the foundation on which we can build belonging, serving, um, and owning. Just a little comparison of the two organizations, just to give you an idea of where I'm coming from. I'm in the King County area, Greater Seattle area. Both our natural markets and my library system enjoy uh, large usage by our members. We're, we're different sizes, but um, different numbers of members. But we, what we're providing, our members want. They tell us over and over again every time they walk in the door and make a transaction with us. So we feel that we know what they want. Um, they're using our service. So the library, talk a little bit more about King County Library System. We exist to provide free and open access to ideas and information. That's a bedrock value that our members share. And um, all levels of society come into our libraries. We get great foot traffic. We get great demographics. So as a system, we started thinking about how can we somehow make use of that. We're in, uniquely positioned in our society. Um, we launched a program called Convey. We started in one community, Kirkland, which is a city in King County. And the community was trying to have a dialogue with themselves about a piece of property. There was a, a railroad track that ran through the community that the railroad owners sold to the community. And the community was trying to decide, what do we want to do with it? Do we want to keep it for the future? Maybe make it a light rail option? Do we want to tear the tracks out and make it a jogging bike path? Do we want to do some kind of a mixed use um, with this opportunity? The city leaders weren't getting enough response from their citizens about this. It wasn't a topic that really engaged people enough for them to come to a city hall meeting and to sign in and stand up and um, present at a hearing. Well, here we are at the library within that community. We're seeing thousands and thousands of people who live, work, and enjoy the city. Maybe we could ask them that question in a different way. So we, we got together with the city and um, came up with a process where we could have some live events in the library asking the question. We could also allow library users to participate in a poll. They would have to opt in but they could weigh, on, weigh in on the topic. Um, we got a great response. There was a, oh, the other thing I meant to point out is um, both PCC and King County Library have a high degree of online users, people visiting the websites, Facebook and Twitter fans and followers. So both of us have this population that's very comfortable engaging online. So another component of our convey system was to make it possible for people to participate when and where they're comfortable. You don't have to walk in to the library to take part of the convey process. So the Kirkland launch of this was successful. We were able to provide some input and some community thought to the city that they weren't able to gather on their own. And we felt as a library, this is a way for us to serve this community further beyond the books and beyond the materials and beyond the internet access to help them have this discussion that they wanted to have. Uh, since the Kirkland experience, that was a couple years ago, we've had uh, similar events and discussions in several communities. And then I passed out um, on your table, our latest is a much larger topic and a much larger discussion. And this is King County wide. Um, starting today in March, we're asking all King County residents to weigh in on hunger in your community. Um, We'll, we're seeding the discussion with a few key questions. People can come. There's two events down there at the bottom. 
um, in Federal Way and Valley View, there's just two different communities. Or there's also a great online opportunity. Um, so we're hopeful that, that this will generate some thought that has not yet been tapped. Moving back to the library, or excuse me, the PCC world, um, similarly, our, our stores and our uh, management and our membership has for years had a great ongoing dialogue and discussion about organic foods, about natural foods, and we have uh, food policy experts both on our board and in the management structure. And uh, Trudy Bialik, for example, is, is store staff, but she also participates in state and national um, organic standards organizations. So Washington State um, had an opportunity to launch an initiative to the people to require GMO labeling. We watched what happened in California, and we thought maybe something could take place in Washington similarly. And early on, our management team cued into the idea of getting this thing on the ballot was important to having a statewide discussion about genetically modified foods. Their decision to participate wasn't so much if we jump in, this thing's going to pass. It was more if we can get this thing onto the ballot, more people are going to talk about it. More people will learn that seeds can be patented. You know, who knew? Um, more people will learn the increase in herbicide use that goes along with genetically modified crops. So we, we realized it would be a daunting task to try to outspend the vote no folks on the initiative. So, so our level of participation was not about pass or fail. It was about having this larger discussion. And as you can see from our member comment, our members felt this was a real service to them. We connected to them at the values level. We provided them to help have this larger discussion. And it was very well received. Um, the initiative did not pass, but the discussions that took place are reverberating today. And then lastly, this is also, I believe, an opportunity for our youngest members to serve. Kids will tell you what tastes good and what tastes bad. You know, they might tell you by verbally, or they might just spit it out, or they might just not choose that one. Kids can also be manipulated by marketing and packaging. And if you know, the honey is in a bear-shaped package versus good raw honey, they might choose one or the other. So our kid picks is an opportunity for our younger members to weigh in on not only what's good for them, but what really tastes good. And then um, products that, that get the thumbs up from our kids get a special label in the stores. They get highlighted. And, and these kids are belonging at a higher level because now when they walk into the store, they say, you know, I said that tasted good. And look, now it's got a sticker on it. Um, so they're participating at a very high level, even at a young age. Thank you.